clog dance. Clog dance. Clog dance. You know how you've got all these students in your orchestra from the Netherlands and they always say, hey, how come we never play music that represents our culture? Well, for them, there's clog dance. But actually, not really. This style of dance did come out of Europe and then into the Appalachian range of the United States and eventually into the American South. So what clog dance actually represents is more on the lines of fiddle music than the traditional European dance form. This is why most orchestras play this passage here at the beginning as double stops rather than divisi notes, even though it's not indicated as non-divisi. Nine times out of ten, the default is to play non-divisi unless otherwise indicated. However, in certain styles it's expected, and in fiddle music, that's one of those styles. Years ago, I went to a session at Tota that was presented by Elliot Del Borgo, who is the composer of Clog Dance, and one of the takeaways that I got from his presentation was that he likes to write music that makes orchestras sound good. Most of the way that clog dance achieves his goal is through the use of open strings. There's a lot of places here that emphasize the use of open strings, and again, that's sort of the fiddle style of playing, so the open string is expected in a lot of these places rather than fingered A's, we hear a lot of open A's and so on. And this provides a lot of reference points for your orchestra to tune to. Also, if your orchestra's open strings are in tune, those notes should more or less be guaranteed, provided that the right hand is doing what it's supposed to do. Clock dance could be an appropriate work for a beginning string orchestra, maybe a non-varsity middle school orchestra, maybe a sub-non-E high school orchestra. It's written in a way that can give younger or less mature players a chance at success. The other cool thing about clog dance is that the second violin part and the viola part are interchangeable. So if you have a smaller orchestra or if you have issues with your instrumentation, that might help solve some problems for you. Clog dance also comes with a piano part, and I've never heard this played at a contest or festival with piano accompaniment, but for a beginning string group, I think that the piano might help to stabilize some of the rhythm and help keep the group together, and, and that might be a good choice. You might have to be careful who you have play that part, make sure that they can play it with a stable rhythm, or maybe just use a track. Clog dance does have some eighth notes, but they're all repeated. So they're not uh, in runs or in skips or anything like that. It's all the same, four eighth notes, all the same note, always together. Clog dance also has a cool road map. It has a da capo, it has a, a coda, and that's pretty fun. Now, there are plenty of challenges in clog dance. It, it is written with the intent to make your orchestra sound good, but you have to consider the level that you're programming for and the challenges that they already have. So the habits that they have and sort of the unpredictability of younger orchestras could be highlighted in clog dance if we don't solve some of those issues in the classroom. In these next few videos, my goal is to try to come up with some ideas for how to create some predictability so that the orchestra can play reliably instead of haphazardly. My goal with these next few videos is to come up with some ideas for how to create some consistency within your orchestra and prevent some of the things like rushing or rushing or more rushing. Young players are impulsive, they don't like to wait, they want to play everything right now, and they tend to rush. So I've got some ideas on 
how to dial that back and how to make the performance of clog dance more consistent. 